Okay, everybody, so this is just an um, uh, introduction to your first design project that you're going to be doing. Um, this project is the first one where you're going to go through the thumbnail process um, and also the first one where you're going to be using the materials that you're going to um, be doing most of your work with this quarter, the Bristol, the markers, um, pencils, things like that. So uh, I wanted to give you a very um, sort of uh, clear directional uh, explanation of what you're going to be doing. Um, so this assignment kind of takes all the information you've been gathering on Gestalt and kind of has you use that to create um, a finished design. So just a quick reminder of what Gestalt is. So a psychological term, it means unified whole. So how do you uh, take small uh, elements and piece them together to make uh, unified forms, whether those are forms that you are drawing or forms that you were seeing. So developed in the 1920s, built around the notion that uh, we tend to organize visual information into groups. Um, and there are certain laws uh, which you've already been exposed to and done some work with. So similarity, um, similar objects um, are grouped together as a whole. So you know if uh, objects, forms, shapes are similar, we tend to group them together into a, um, a grouping. Um, often that creates like a um, new image, um, like this one here with the eagles. Anomaly being um, uh, a group of um, objects or shapes are very similar, but one is slightly different. And by being slightly different, then our attention is drawn to it. Continuation. Uh, this is a really sort of classic continuation example, but continuation doesn't have to necessarily be so very direct. So by that, I mean that like, um, perhaps continuation is something which happens when um, a pattern um, that is um, includes say like a diagonal line um, is like if you lined if you have a section of that pattern and you lined it up directly below it say the diagonal lines perhaps wouldn't connect but if there was a slight brick movement so like shifting to the left or to the right the diagonal line would visually connect. And so like continuation can be any type of visual movement that you create where there is a continuation of a certain element from one area to another. Um, it is directional um, and it does give us a, a good strong sense of, of movement when um, we sort of do this in design. Closure is, you know, very classic closure, which is just the um, WWF bear, panda bear. So this is such an important element because it's so important to recognize that um, you don't have to tell the viewer everything. You don't have to give them every bit of information. Let them work it out. And by working it out, they will stay with your design longer and your interest that you create will be much more successful. So we talk about this a lot in drawing as well, like don't draw everything, leave some places unfinished to let the viewer finish them so that there is a visual playfulness that intrigues them and keeps them attentive to your work. Proximity. Um, this is a, it, you know, it sort of feels very similar to similarity, but the big difference that I was talking about here is that in similarity, we tend to sort of create a new image, whereas with proximity, we tend not to. So proximity basically just says that when elements are placed close together, they're seen as a group. Um, figure and ground, this is all about ambiguity. And so you want to play with ambiguous space with figure and ground. And so you're trying to get the viewer to sort of see two images simultaneously and to try to get their brain to pick one or the other as dominant. And really good figure and ground is really like the dominant and non-dominant shapes like 
are just always contesting for that that focus and so um, there are times when there is no focus and the brain is just trying to figure things out and I always think that that is an example of really good figuring ground when there's ambiguity between the, the figure and the ground.